Hey guys, what is up? Today is Thanksgiving Day. And it's about time I get a day off because I've been so crazy busy. And if you haven't seen these around in the studio for like the past six or seven months, it's the headers for the IS300. So today I'll be putting the headers on the IS300. And I took off, if you see it over here, my entire exhaust only because I had to fix my uh, electronic cutoff. So I had to take it off to get it fixed. And I was just gonna leave it off for a few days because I had to get my headers on there. But I finally get a day off. So welcome to today's video, guys. I'm gonna be showing you how to do this to your IS300. It's pretty straightforward, but there's a few things involved that you need to get right because you don't wanna break any sensors. So you have a total of three sensors. Now two of them, you could easily uh, get to it and you could just spray like DW40 on there and then wait about an hour, which I already did already. And you can be able to remove that quite easy with the 22 millimeter. And the third sensor is back here. It's a little bit in a difficult position to get to because you have no room. So I'm just going to unplug it from the top sensor. And then when we remove it, just be gentle not to uh, rip anything off when removing that. Come on. Quads. Thanksgiving day, so everybody's just gonna be driving their motorcycles and quads like every five or ten minutes. I actually might go go down to the street too with my Yamaha. But anyways, guys, like I was saying, so you have the option of going downward or upward. I think it's easier, and it actually is a little bit easier to go downward with the headers to remove them. But I have my pit covered, and I don't want to move my trailer then remove all the plywoods out of the way so i'm just too lazy i'm just gonna go ahead and remove the sensor and then the intake assembly out of the way remove the uh, negative in my case i just removed them both because this was going to be in the way see that how it's going to be in the way that cable so i just didn't want to deal with it so i went ahead and removed both of them that's the first thing you want to do because you're going to be removing sensors and you don't want to take a chance but before we go down there i want to show you the headers there's so these are what we're looking at see how those two are very easy accessible and then this third one is not so let me take this cap off by the way there are eight bolts you have to loosen and that's going to be a 14 millimeter and on my car they're not too bad uh, just get a breaker bar or you could just use a pipe and then just extend it and you should be able to break it quite easily. So that third sensor to get to, this is the one I took off is not easy taking out so just be very gentle not to break it but when you do release that sensor out it's pulled from a clip in the bottom which is like almost some type of zip tie thing so you're gonna have to break that off too and then when you put it back on the new one just use a regular zip tie in that same bracket from the bottom you'll know what I'm talking about if you take that off got all eight bolts successfully removed not a problem make sure you just don't strip it I totally recommend using a uh, half inch drive so way worth it and then I was gonna talk to you about oh, shoot. I was gonna talk to you about the check engine light because you don't have cats in these aftermarket headers you will be running the check engine light and with the check engine light it doesn't run as good it could give you worse gas mileage but it's not a big deal. There's two ways to, to fix that problem. You, you could either do it with bunks, which is the way I'm going to be doing. I have my 90 degree bunk and I have two other smaller ones. And I have some extras in case for whatever reason these don't work. They're by, what are they, JGR. Not that expensive. You can get them for like 20 so bucks. So what I'm going to be doing is just putting them on. Ugh. Putting them on just like so, and then the sensor just goes into this. What it does is reduces the air pressure, 
So the oxygen sensors are just gonna be reduced. They're not gonna be throwing as much as air, the signal. So your ECU thinks everything's okay and therefore your check engine light shouldn't be off or on for that reason. But my number two method of getting rid of the check engine light is with a simulator. If I don't like the way it's working with the bunks, I'll see how it drives and all that. If I don't like the way it's, it's kind of dirty. There, much better. If I don't like the way it handles, I mean, if I don't like the way it drives, then I'm gonna go ahead and go to simulators. But I wanted to try the bunks first. I want to do the bunks and we'll see how that goes. If not, then we'll just go ahead and do the simulators and then you have to solder those on, not a problem. But it's just a little bit more extra work. Oh snap. I need to put the camera down because I can't do this with one hand. The headers did not want to come up from the front. I have to remove the uh, heat shield from the bottom section, which I already got the bolt off. I didn't want to do that. I wanted to keep them on there because when you take off the heat shield, you have to bend them back. And more than likely, I'm going to use these headers again. So I didn't want to get rid of the heat shields because of that. So I was thinking I could maybe just take off the throttle body and sneak it up there. But the heat shield just, it'll niche it on the metal. It, it's just not enough room with the heat shield. So unfortunately, I have to take it off. But it's not that difficult. It's pretty easy. There's just one bolt. It's a 10 millimeter. And then once you take off that bolt, then all you do is just pry it out like so. Oh guys, this is a huge difference. I weighed them both and OEM stock are 26 pounds versus 17 pounds. So that would be a difference of six, seven, eight, of nine whole pounds, which is quite a bit because of those catalytic converters. You see 1926, 789. So nine whole pounds we will be saving from the weight, which is pretty good. And every pound counts. Every pound counts. Next thing I'm gonna do, guys, so the next thing to do now we're gonna use some carb cleaner and then spray all that gum out of there and oil residue. They're just still in really good condition. I'm just gonna clean them up and then uh, they should be ready to go. I'm already done bolting them down, tying them up. I just have to torque them, uh, which would be 29 pounds. And so the pattern in which I'm doing, which I'm using would be as following. It'll be one, then we have two, three, four, then we got five, six, seven inside, and then it ends with eight right there. Make sure you don't forget to put your uh, your anti-seize lubricant so the next time you take them off they won't be that difficult to take off. All right, I got those two. And then you don't have to turn much, just maybe a quarter of a turn. And then you should be good. So we just put the throttle, bo throttle body back together and the full exhaust. And I'm so hungry. Thanksgiving day, guys. Only day I can get off. But, oh man. Hopefully I can get this done before another 30 minutes or so. 
until it's all zipped up and ready to go. Throw all the body already. Oh, shoot. My sensor. All right, got that one already. So it should be all done. Now all I would have to do, by the way, looks really nice. But I'm gonna go ahead and install the rest of the exhaust. Took a while, had some problems with the, the OEM gasket. It was just a little part of it ripped. So we're gonna turn it on. I'm gonna turn it on right now. And if there's an exhaust leak, I'll just switch that one out. But everything else should be pretty good. So that's what we got. I know there's a small exhaust leak down there. Now the way to test it out, you can get like soap and water and just squirt it on there. So I might do that later on, but I'm gonna eat first. I'm just starving guys. That's about it. I'm gonna go. I'm hungry. Happy Thanksgiving guys, and we'll see you guys on the next video. Any questions, just put them down in the comments. Alright, I think we're good. <laughs>